James Monroe, the fifth president of the United States and the era of good feelings. Today, we embark on a journey through the life and presidency of one of the pivotal figures in American history, James Monroe. Born on April 28, 1758, in Westmoreland County, Virginia, James Monroe's life was intertwined with the very fabric of the American nation, spanning from its revolutionary beginnings to the era of westward expansion and territorial growth. Early Life and Education James Monroe was born on April 28, 1758, in Westmoreland County, Virginia, to Spence Monroe and Elizabeth Jones Monroe. He was the eldest of five children. The Monroe family belonged to the planter class, a privileged segment of colonial Virginia society. Despite their relative affluence, the Monroe family faced financial difficulties due to the mismanagement of their estate. Monroe's early education began at a local school run by a Scottish schoolteacher named Donald Robertson. He then continued his studies under private tutors before enrolling at Campbelltown Academy, where he furthered his education in classical subjects such as Latin and Greek. In 1774, at the age of 16, Monroe entered the College of William and Mary, one of the premier educational institutions in the colonies. However, his studies were interrupted by the outbreak of the American Revolutionary War. Military Service Driven by a fervent desire to fight for the cause of American independence, Monroe left college in 1775 to join the Continental Army. He initially served under Colonel John Marshall in the 3rd Virginia Regiment. Monroe's early military career was marked by bravery and dedication, earning him rapid promotions. Monroe participated in several key battles of the Revolutionary War, including the Battle of Trenton, where he famously crossed the icy Delaware River with General George Washington on Christmas night in 1776. His valor and leadership on the battlefield caught the attention of his superiors and earned him the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Return to Education after the war, Monroe resumed his studies at William and Mary, determined to complete his education. However, his time in the military had instilled in him a deep sense of duty and patriotism, shaping his future ambitions and career path. During his college years, Monroe became acquainted with prominent figures such as Thomas Jefferson and George Wythe, who would later influence his political philosophy and career choices. Legal Studies and Mentorship under Thomas Jefferson Upon graduating from William and Mary in 1780, Monroe pursued a career in law, studying under the guidance of his mentor, Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson, who would later become the third president of the United States, imparted his revolutionary ideals and political principles to Monroe, shaping his worldview and guiding his entry into public service. Monroe's legal training under Jefferson equipped him with the knowledge and skills necessary for a career in public service, laying the foundation for his future role as a statesman and diplomat. Political Career James Monroe's political career is a fascinating journey marked by dedication to public service, diplomatic acumen, and steadfast commitment to the principles of democracy. Let's explore the key milestones and achievements in Monroe's political trajectory. Early Political Involvement Following his legal studies under Thomas Jefferson, James Monroe embarked on a career in public service, driven by a sense of duty and patriotism instilled in him during the Revolutionary War. His early political involvement included serving in the Virginia House of Delegates, where he championed the interests of his constituents and advocated for legislative reforms to benefit the common citizen. Continental Congress and Diplomatic Service Monroe's political career gained momentum when he was elected to the Continental Congress in 1783. During his tenure, he played a crucial role in negotiating the Treaty of Paris, which formally ended the Revolutionary War and secured American independence from Great Britain. Monroe's diplomatic skills and statesmanship earned him recognition as a rising political star on the national stage. Minister to France In 1794, President George Washington appointed Monroe as the United States Minister to France, 
a position of great importance during a tumultuous period in European history. Monroe's tenure in France coincided with the French Revolution and the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte. He navigated the complex political landscape with skill and diplomacy, seeking to strengthen diplomatic ties between the United States and France while safeguarding American interests abroad. Governor of Virginia and U.S. Senator Upon his return to the United States, Monroe served as Governor of Virginia from 1799 to 1802, where he implemented progressive policies to promote economic development and improve infrastructure. His tenure as governor solidified his reputation as a competent and capable leader, laying the groundwork for his subsequent election to the U.S. Senate in 1810. Secretary of State and Secretary of War James Monroe's pivotal role in American politics reached new heights when he was appointed as Secretary of State and Secretary of War under President James Madison. As Secretary of State, Monroe played a central role in shaping American foreign policy, particularly during the War of 1812 against Great Britain. His diplomatic efforts helped to secure vital alliances and diplomatic agreements, contributing to the successful outcome of the conflict. Presidency James Monroe's presidency, which spanned from 1817 to 1825, was a transformative period in American history characterized by territorial expansion, diplomatic achievements, and the consolidation of national unity. Let's delve into the key aspects of Monroe's presidency and its lasting impact on the United States. The Era of Good Feelings James Monroe's presidency is often associated with the Era of Good Feelings, a period marked by political harmony, economic prosperity, and a sense of national unity following the War of 1812. Monroe's election in 1816 was a testament to the growing consensus and stability within American politics. As partisan divisions temporarily receded in favor of a more unified national identity, domestic policies, economic policies, Monroe's administration pursued policies aimed at promoting economic growth and development, including investments in infrastructure such as roads and canals. The establishment of the Second Bank of the United States in 1816 helped stabilize the nation's financial system and stimulate economic expansion. Westward Expansion Monroe's presidency witnessed a surge in westward expansion fueled by the acquisition of new territories and the influx of settlers seeking land and opportunity. The adams onis Treaty of 1819 secured Florida from Spain, while the Missouri Compromise of 1820 temporarily resolved tensions over the expansion of slavery into new territories. Indian Removal Monroe's administration pursued policies of Indian removal, leading to the forced relocation of Native American tribes from their ancestral lands to territories west of the Mississippi River. The passage of the Indian Removal Act in 1830, during the presidency of Monroe's successor, Andrew Jackson, accelerated this process, resulting in the tragic Trail of Tears. Foreign Policy The Monroe Doctrine One of James Monroe's most significant foreign policy achievements was the Monroe Doctrine, articulated in his seventh annual message to Congress in 1823. The doctrine declared that the Western Hemisphere was close to further colonization by European powers and that any attempt to interfere in the affairs of the newly independent Latin American nations would be viewed as a threat to the United States. The Monroe Doctrine laid the groundwork for America's foreign policy stance of non-interventionism and became a cornerstone of U.S. foreign relations relations with Europe. Monroe's presidency saw efforts to strengthen diplomatic ties with European powers, particularly Great Britain. The rush baggett Treaty of 1817 and the Treaty of 1818 with Britain resolved territorial disputes and established a framework for peaceful cooperation in North America. Recognition of Latin American independence. Monroe's administration extended diplomatic recognition to the newly independent nations of Latin America, signaling American support for their sovereignty and independence from European colonial powers. James Monroe's legacy reverberates through American history, 
leaving an indelible mark on the nation's development, foreign policy, and political landscape. Let's explore the enduring aspects of Monroe's legacy, the Monroe Doctrine. Arguably Monroe's most enduring legacy, the Monroe Doctrine laid the foundation for American foreign policy in the Western Hemisphere. By declaring that the United States would oppose further European colonization in the Americas and refrain from interfering in European affairs, Monroe asserted America's role as a regional power while signaling its commitment to preserving the sovereignty and independence of Latin American nations. The Monroe Doctrine shaped U.S. foreign relations for generations, influencing policies of non-interventionism, territorial expansion, and diplomatic engagement in the Americas. Territorial Expansion and Westward Expansion Monroe's presidency witnessed significant territorial expansion with the acquisition of Florida from Spain and the establishment of the Missouri Compromise to manage the issue of slavery in new territories. These expansionist policies contributed to the growth of the United States as a continental power, paving the way for the nation's westward expansion and the fulfillment of its manifest destiny to span from coast to coast. Monroe's administration played a pivotal role in shaping the geographic boundaries and territorial integrity of the United States. The Era of Good Feelings Although the term Era of Good Feelings may oversimplify the complexities of Monroe's presidency, it reflects a period of relative political harmony and national unity following the War of 1812. Monroe's leadership during this time helped to bridge partisan divides and foster a sense of patriotism and optimism among the American people. While challenges and controversies persisted, Monroe's emphasis on national unity laid the groundwork for the continued stability and prosperity of the United States. Contributions to American Democracy Throughout his political career, James Monroe championed the principles of democracy, liberty, and self-determination, from his service in the Continental Congress to his presidency, Monroe advocated for the rights and freedoms of all Americans. Working to uphold the ideals enshrined in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, his commitment to representative government and individual rights left a lasting imprint on the fabric of American democracy, inspiring future generations of leaders to strive for a more perfect union. Diplomatic Achievements and Statesmanship as a diplomat, statesman, and president, James Monroe demonstrated remarkable diplomatic acumen and leadership on the world stage. From negotiating treaties to fostering international alliances, Monroe's diplomatic efforts helped to secure America's place among the community of nations and promote peace and stability in a rapidly changing world. His legacy as a skilled negotiator, consensus builder, and advocate for American interests abroad continues to inspire U.S. foreign policymakers to this day. James Monroe's legacy encompasses a wide array of achievements and contributions to the American experience. From his articulation of the Monroe Doctrine to his leadership during the Era of Good Feelings, Monroe's presidency left an indelible mark on American history, shaping the nation's identity, values, and aspirations. As we reflect on Monroe's legacy, we are reminded of his enduring impact on the course of American democracy and the ongoing pursuit of liberty and justice for all. Thank you for your time. Be sure to like and subscribe if you liked this video.